Wall Street traders hoping they can make up some ground after yesterday's massive sell-off. They have a good start to the morning so far. Take a look at the Dow right now, up 173 points. But look at that lower number. We are under 11,000. Between the downgrade and the hits to the market, there is no shortage of finger pointing going on. Before the downgrade, a CBS News New York Times poll found 47% of Americans blamed Republicans for the gridlock surrounding the debt ceiling deal. 29% blamed President Obama. 20% said both are equally to blame. So where does this uh, blame really lie for all this economic turmoil? Joining us to weigh in, Fox News contributors Deneen Borelli. She is a Project 21 fellow and a columnist for the Daily Caller website. Kirsten Powers is a New York Post columnist. Interesting, Deneen, as you saw there in that uh, poll, a lot of Americans blame Republicans for what happened, and yet it was after the president spoke yesterday that everything really hit the skids on Wall Street. Yeah, the market tanked significantly while he was talking and even after he was talking. Listen, this blame game is not going to solve our financial crisis. You have the liberal left who is demonizing the Tea Party movement, for example, as the cause for the downgrade in the S in the S S S&P. And you know, it was the Tea Party that was sounding the alarm several years ago that we are spending way too much money. When President Obama took office, our GDP to our, our debt to GDP was 40 uh, percent. Today it's over 72 percent. That is outrageous. So we have some serious economic concerns that need to be addressed and they need to stop doing this uh, blame game because yeah. it's not getting us anywhere. You know, Kirsten, I, I get all kinds of emails and uh, top lines from our from the folks on our chat who are saying, hey, you know, please don't describe what was what was achieved last week as any kind of a budget cut, what they've really done is slow the growth in future deficits. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I think the, a lot of what you've seen in the the markets actually is just a response to the fact that, it, the, that the deal that they reached really was not the type of deal that the market wanted to see. It was not anything that was substantial. And, and that's where a lot of the anger is coming from. Yes, the, the brinkmanship is problematic, but the real problem is the deal that, th that they reached. It just isn't going to do enough to uh, get us to where we need to be in terms of, of uh, cutting our deficit. So let's get back to the question from the lead-in, Kirsten, uh, from, you know, from your vantage point who gets the blame is it both parties is it both branches of government well if you look at that poll people were blaming republicans more but i think that ultimately people are frustrated with both parties in washington and the president while he you know in that poll wasn't getting as, as much of the blame is is ultimately you know he's not He's not running against Congress for his reelection. He's going to be running against another uh, candidate. And so if the economy is not doing well uh, and, our, and our deficit's not getting under control and people don't feel like things are moving in the right direction, then he will be held, held accountable whether or not he gets the bulk of the blame in this particular situation. Deneen, uh, I know you're not probably called upon to advise the White House regularly, but if you were, what would you tell Mr. Obama to do? Uh, be a leader, stop the spending, and make decisions that are in the best interest of our country. He had numerous uh, press conferences over the past several days when the market was tanking, and he had no solution, no plan. Even when there were several plans in play, uh, Harry Reid d stopped the debate for cap cut cut cap and balance and also for the Ryan plan and so if you want to talk about gridlock look at what Harry Reid did when there were suggestions and ideas on the table and he would not allow them to go forward Kirsten we've talked about this before even the president's budget didn't get a single Democratic vote in the Senate that would suggest that uh, he's a little off the mark when it comes to budgetary matters well, I think that's because they felt that it it was already dealt with in the in the most recent deal. So it sort of superseded uh, his budget. They they thought that it had all been addressed in in the in the debt deal that they reached. So. Um, look, I think both parties are, are going to have to come to the table and make more compromises. It's, you know, the, it's, the criticisms for the Democrats and for President Obama are on the mark in terms of not really taking on entitlements. But at the same time, uh, the, you know, and I know the Tea Party people don't like to hear this, but there's going to have to be some revenue raisers uh, to, to try to, you know, there's just really no way to do it. You can't tax do it through increases. just through cuts. But you can't yeah, raise and, taxes and, and, and through, in this economy. And, and you just through, can't you, do well, it. You well, actually, you actually you can. I mean, if you went, if you got rid of the Bush tax you cuts and just went back and went back up to what they were during the Clinton administration, that was a booming economy. So well, the, we need our spending cuts and we need regulations that, that are reformed. Up to like a, to a certain amount. You don't, you're not going to raise them drastically, but there's going to have to be some closing of the loopholes and other things like right. that.
Denine, we need tax reform. Thought. We need regulation reform. We need to grow the economy. Taxing people more is not going to grow the economy. You talked about the flash mobs earlier that are taking place across the country. These people don't have any jobs. Unemployment is over 16%. Yeah. Among teens is over 40%. It's outrageous. People need to be employed, and then that way they will contribute to the tax revenue. Denine, but you can't raise taxes on people. It's Denine not going to work. And Kirsten Powers, thank you both. Thank, thank you. you.